So the winter season has been succeeded by the spring, it's gotten warm outside, and as such, car owners are having certain problems associated with their radiators, hoses, and all of those other bits that go with them. Anyways, so check this out. Right here I've got me a radiator, and this is an old-fashioned brass one. These bits over here are metal, and so... This happens to be one of the main components of an automobile's cooling system. And in this episode, we're gonna try and uh, get an idea on how the radiator cap functions. And what happens when it is no longer fit for use. When all of that residual filth, debris and what have you, clogs up the valve and uh, makes it stick. See what might come out of that sort of scenario. Basically, see what happens when all of these parts no longer function as they should. Okay, let's do this. So here's the system we've set up, and it's rather curious. It follows the stock configuration, the difference being we've removed the cooling fans so that we could um, heat the engine up quicker. Also, right here we have a transparent cooling hose section. With it we'll immediately notice when the water in the cooling system begins to boil. And over here we're running this. It's from a household heating system. And it's used to measure temperature and pressure. So I think we're running more than enough temperature gauges. The reason we'll need a pressure gauge is that, well, the cap usually indicates the pressure at which the valve opens up and uh, relieves any excess into the overflow tank. The interesting thing would be to see what the engine temperature is at that point. So this is actually a series of small experiments. So let's kick it off and see where it goes. Okay, so let's start the engine without the cap for now. A contaminated system means less heat transfer and less time for the engine to get hot. And while we've got the supplementary sensors on there, we'll check and see when it all starts boiling. Let her rip. So the primary gauge isn't showing us anything quite yet. The supplementary gauge is at 35 Celsius, which just turned to 36. And over here, it's not even a 20 yet. But as soon as this begins to warm up, we'll be slowly adding water to get the air out of there. Okay, now we just wait and see how quickly we get there. So the water is warming up and expanding in the process. And any excess liquid is dripping out through this tube that's supposed to be routed into the overflow tank. We haven't fitted one, so we're just here observing, seeing that the water is overflowing and dripping out from the radiator. We're running two gauges in the cabin, one primary and another supplementary digital readout. The latter is showing us 60 and change, and they seem to be showing right around the same thing. So let's wait for a bit more, things will heat up, and we'll see what's up. And at 80 degrees, the thermostat is starting to crack open. The lower hose is starting to get nice and warm. So the hot coolant is now going to flow into the radiator, making it nice and warm. So the temperature is at 80 degrees Celsius, the thermostat is all the way open, you can see the circulation happening. The system is pumping hot coolant through the open thermostat to cool it down and feed it back through. But it is not able to cool down promptly. And check that out! I can see a massive amount of air. 
which tells us that the cooling system isn't up to it. The gauge is showing us a mere 96 degrees, the engine is really hot and the liquid is boiling. Look at that fountain. Switch the engine off. Shut it off. Yeah, without a doubt. But the temperature reading has dropped to 94 degrees. There's air somewhere in the system. Okay, so as we all know, the higher the pressure, the higher the boiling point. So if we were to bring the pressure up to one kilo, the boiling temperature should go up to about 110 degrees, I reckon. We know what the boiling temp is without a cap, so let's fit the cap, fire the engine up, and check to see how hot the coolant gets before it begins to boil. So at 85 degrees the thermostat is fully open, the lower hose has gotten hot, and through here you can see that we have circulation around the large circle. We are not seeing any pressure though. The hoses don't seem to be too puffy, but you can definitely feel some pressure in them. Let's continue observing. 92 degrees, the needle on the pressure gauge is now moving. The cap is relieving excess pressure into the overflow tank. The pressure is only at 0.3 bar. It's trying to get to 0.4. That was premature. Switch it off. That was not a whole lot of pressure. Around 0.4 bar and look at what happened. This connection right here let go. Okay, let's allow it to cool off then. Connect everything back together. Fire the engine back up and look on. One oh five, and we have bubbles. One oh five, and the bubbling is intensifying. Look at that. And that tells us that the boiling point is very close. We are at the threshold. One oh nine, so far so good. Things are going the way they should. One oh nine is very near the boiling point. There is a bit of boiling going on, but not much. It's not properly boiling quite yet. The gauge is showing us a temperature of 110 degrees. The thermostat is fully open and that's a mighty stream. I can see some air. That's a mighty stream, I can see some air. Switch it off. Excellent. Obviously with no pressure, it's gonna boil like mad. But ultimately the temperature did go up to 110 degrees, and the water was barely even boiling. Because that wasn't proper boiling we were seeing. So the transparent section doesn't seem to be holding up. No, look, it's actually noticeably deformed. Something's sizzling. This calls for more modifications. Okay, so we've gone ahead and revamped this. Last time this hose disconnected, and so we've added some beads. Now we should be alright. We are bound to hit boiling temp and see what the exact number is. Fire it up. Okay, so as soon as the thermostat opened, the pressure inside the system began to rise. The current temperature is 83 degrees Celsius, looking good so far. We should be seeing an increase in pressure soon enough.
Wow, the tube is really starting to swell. It is getting huge. This ain't gonna end well. Look at the swelling on the transparent bed. Frigging hell. Keeps getting bigger. Artem, it's about to explode. Shut it off. Yeah, fire it back up and give it some gas. That's enough. It's a steam generator, yeah. Check it out, guys. You saw it all for yourselves. Look what happened. At the end of the day, first time around a hose ruptured. After that, as we all saw, the water got all the way up to 120 degrees. And the pressure was almost at two bar. The cap does what it's supposed to. And the excess liquid was being dumped into the overflow tank. Or, well, onto the floor, rather. And so if, for whatever reason, you've been mixing coolant, or you haven't replaced it for a while, gases might form because of a small crack, oil contamination will result in gunk building up, that's gonna clog the valve on the cap, and create excess pressure. And way more of it than there should be. As for where that goes, well, that's going to try to find a weak point to burst to freedom. I mean, it can even destroy your head gasket. If, say, you were running a new set of hoses and everything else. So this isn't something you should joke around with. So make sure to be on time with coolant replacement. Okay, so check this out. Here we have the filter we used to flush the primary radiator. And here we have the one that soaked up the filth from the heater core. That is a lot of grod, man. Now you make sure to look after your engines. Prevent overheating situations that might cause catastrophic failure. Cooling system components aren't cheap, so do your diligence. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment. Give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.